Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Got a real treat for you today. Well, at, at least it was a treat for me to go visit what I think is one of the most hardcore, <laughs> biggest audiophiles I've ever met. And uh, I met him at Expona and he invited me out to his home and I was prepared for, he said, I have eight systems and he kind of rattled off the gear. I was somewhat prepared for it, but I was still blown away to see what I saw <laughs> firsthand. And when I say systems, like in terms of not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there's even more. I mean, there's uh, systems that his kids have that include Von Schweiker, BMW, Art Audio, uh, that I didn't even get to. And he has a home theater with JM Labs, Grand Utopias, <laughs> and Levinson, and oh my God. We didn't even, well, I have a little bit of video of that, but we're talking about in these main rooms that I'm featuring, we're talking about Dino, Dynaudio Evidence Masters, Estelon Extremes, probably the only pair in the United States that I'm aware of. Certainly, I haven't seen them at any shows. Um, very few people have even heard those. Uh, and then the Aries Surratt speaker that I featured at Expona. Got to spend a lot more time with it in a home environment, much better than that hotel room. So those are going to be quite a treat. Today is just an overview video where I focus on these main systems to give you just my initial impression, stream of consciousness, the, the next morning after I flew in, uh, early in the morning, what I was seeing. And then I'll do, I did film more dedicated videos for each system with music clips, model numbers, and all of that. So you're going to want to subscribe, sign up for notifications, because this could be an interesting series. Now, when I say he's the biggest audiophile or the most hardcore, you know, certainly that's under certain metrics of monetary and experience. He's got over 25 years experience. But that's, that's not the only thing that makes you an audiophile, the money you spent or even your experience. I mean, for me, uh, if you tell me you have a Lin LP12 turntable, a Spender BC1s, you know, ARC, uh, you know, legacy amps, an LS5 preamp, I'm going to be super impressed with that. If that's what you've had and still have today, that is going to impress me as much as anything. Um, it's really how you embrace the hobby and show your passion for it. Is it all about showing off gear? There are some people that just buy and show off and that kind of stuff. But the guys that I've featured that have a lot of money and have I've gone to their homes, that's what's really impressed me the most about it, is not just the gear, which is obviously great, but they all have a passion for the hobby. They've been in it for a while. Or even the gentleman that his very first system, let me tell you about this real quick. His very first system was MBL Extremes. So you would naturally say, oh, he's just a guy with a lot of money. He's not a real audiophile. He's not, you know, true audiophile by stereotypical definition. And he might agree with you. Um, but what I've noticed over a year is that in some respects, he's now one of the biggest audiophiles I know. When you look at a metric different from experience or monetary, well, a monetary obviously spent a lot. But in terms of a guy that has dove head first into the hobby and bought systems for all of his um, homes, not because he wants to show off and show it to other people, but because he's using his, when he bought the uh, MBL Extremes and has the loaner system now, just as a loaner system, he says it totally transformed his life. He would watch TV mostly in his living room. Now it's nonstop music and he plays what he wants, never audiophile music. You'll never hear an audiophile tune in his, unless uh, we're doing some testing in his house. Uh, he's playing what he wants, as loud as he wants. Could be his own music, could be his friend's music, could be whatever it is, whatever whoever's over and wants to play. And so when you talk about somebody enjoying his system and enjoying music, if that's the metric for an audiophile, he's near the top of the list as well. But in, in this case, the person I'm talking about today, I met him at Expona and could immediately sense his passion and drive and experience and you know, I just got to know him a little bit better there. And then since then, he invited me out to his home to listen to these systems. And I jumped at the chance, especially when he told me what he had. It turns out we have a lot of other things in common, too. Like outside of being audiophiles, we'd probably be good friends as well on just these other metrics. But in terms of being an audiophile, yes, he's got unparalleled eye candy. You're going to enjoy that and rare esoteric equipment and lots of money spent. And what you're seeing in these videos is just what he has now. It's not, I mean, he's 
I talked about acapella speakers. Yeah, I've had those. Avant-garde speakers. Yeah, I've had those. Solution, CH Precision, you name it. Every cable he's had, just about every tweak you're going to see in these videos. And what, one of the things that impressed me about it, again, outside of the, mon the money spent and the fancy gear, is that he's intellectually honest. When he buys stuff, whether it's you know, a DAC that he spent 20000 on, he opens the case. That's what's impressive. He'll open up what's in there. If it's, you know, dinky parts and mostly air, you know, he's intellectually honest and says, I think I got ripped off. He'll look for somebody better. Um, and then same thing with all these tweaks. He's tried them all. You know, he doesn't just poo-poo them because they defy physics or engineering or non-measurement potential. Uh, he tries them all. And then he's intellectually honest. Most of them, it was very good to see that, you know, my hunches on a lot of these gear, these tweaks uh, echoed what he has found with first-hand impressions. So you're going to see a lot of that in the video. But he even goes another level, two levels. At. Number one, I rarely see certain things that I think that I'm one of the few people that know about these in the industry because I spend so much time and have so many years there are things that I saw that he knows about them too. And that's extremely rare. You'll see, I'll mention one tidbit in the video to follow. These, some of these things you never see, um, especially snipping off the ends of connectors of high price cables and putting this esoteric connector on it that a lot of people don't see. You don't even see it with mega dollar cords. Uh, you're about to see that in the video today. But he'll also go even further than that, like grounding boxes. He's cracked them open and kind of reverse engineered what's in it, you know, pieced out what's in there. Um, going to that level is just one level. The next level is he decides to build one better and not for resale. He's got enough money. He doesn't need to sell stuff. Uh, I told him he should sell these and who knows down the road. But the parts cost alone from when he built something for himself, it is insane. So I'll have a separate video just on that. And then uh, one further, so I'll have a separate video on that. And then all of the systems will have a separate video, but a few little surprises. Um, and I, I want to disclose one thing up front. He's not going to be in these videos, but, and the, one of the reasons is that I wanted this just to be like I do with other home visits where I just share my impressions and kind of narrate uh, my, and feature this gear. Uh, but he's also so passionate about two particular brands, Airy Surratt and Inacoustic Cables, that he is basically a reseller for the North American distributor in terms of being able to offer home auditions and that gear and kind of resell that gear in a region of the United States. I, we didn't even talk much about that. I don't even know what region is his. So, but if you are interested in those particular brands, uh, this isn't a sales video. He's not even going to be in front of the camera pitching or anything. This is just an uh, audio file featuring another audio file. But if you do want to get in contact with him, if you are a serious potential buyer, want to audition, send me an email and I can put you in touch with him. But I do want to disclose that ahead of time uh, just to be transparent. Uh, but this is just like going, like I go to 3MA and other people's houses, uh, featuring a guy and some brands that he is really passionate about. Now, one other thing that I surprised that he loaned me an inacoustic power cable to take home and I'm going to try it out and I'm going to give my impressions. Now, normally cables and all that stuff I feature in the membership section, uh, but I'll even show you real quick a little preview. He gave me for his grounding box that he's also going to send me one. He made some cables for me for the grounding box. This is where he doesn't use the inacoustic because um, I don't think they have a grounded cable, but he builds his own grounding cable. So he made this pretty much almost all of it in front of me while I was there. And looking at the parts alone, cost, just cost, and that's why he, he probably could never sell them or sell very little of them, $2,000 worth of cost right here. This pure silver, I mean, this is jewelry grade, big gauge silver. You know, when a lot of cable companies say they use silver, Mm, look at how pure that silver is, number one, and then look at the gauge. Oftentimes, they give you such small gauge that a bigger gauge of copper is actually more conductive than that small gauge of silver. Not in this case. <laughs> this is really impressive. And then he's got a special slurry 
um, special mixture that he does for his grounding boxes. I'm not going to disclose that in case he ever decides to sell it and whatnot. Um, but I will, that's also included in this. So you start getting the benefits of the grounding slurry within the cable. Very impressive. That's the level that he goes to on top of just being a guy that you see buys fancy gear. Uh, so again, this is a Extremely rare to come across somebody with this level of experience and this type of gear. So without further ado, though, let me give you a little taste of it. And then to come is a bunch of single videos on each system. Sign up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you back here soon. Okay, guys, this is going to be one of the best treats, one of the best things I've filmed on the channel. Um, visiting a gentleman out in Sacramento and obviously beautiful home and has, I think, eight systems, and you're gonna see some things you have never could imagine. I'm gonna start here in this first room, and it really, I don't, I can't give you, a lot of this stuff I recognize, um, and it's hard to recognize some of this stuff unless you've been in the industry a long, long time. So I'll get the actual model numbers at some point, but um, let's, go through a little bit of this room first. I'm gonna give you an overview, then we'll do some more detailed as we go. I'm not even sure how to even comprehend <laughs> filming all of this for you, but just gonna do this stream of conscious. Um, these are JBL Everest, I believe. Heard them before. Not my favorite speakers, um, but man, do they sound good with Keon. This is something you rarely see. Bi-amping Keygon audio note amps with the silver, pure silver transformers. I don't think you guys realize. Pure silver transformers? I think these probably sell for over $100,000. And these are the Western Electric 300Bs. <laughs> Original eight of them. Okay? This is insane. Just seeing this alone... Is something you rarely see. Um, and then this Aerie Surratt gear. I'm, this stuff is starting to impress me beyond belief. We took off the cover, and maybe I'll do it in the video again. Um, I didn't video it at the time, but you can do some biasing. All of the Aerie Surratt gear allows you for doing some tweaking of the bias. It's got tube complements um, and hybrid design that's really innovative and definitely noticeable especially on the amps uh, we did it on the usb the dac here you want to see under the hood of a dac i'll show you this i know my friend mikey's been showing under the hood of the dac which is really good because a lot of these you cracked open the hood of a of some of these other dacs and see nothing but open air um you're gonna see about the amount of dac chips in here alone yeah, again none of this guarantees good sound but trust me, you're talking about a company that thinks of everything with this Aerie Surratt gear. Um, and I got to say, my initial impressions when I first saw them, I thought, oh, just another fancy chassis. They went all out. No, that, once you hear it, once you get into it, um, understanding it and hearing, and they think of everything. And their manual comes in a hardcover book. I mean, literally everything is thought of. But again, there's so much to digest here, just in this room, okay? This is just the first room he took me to, his most modest budget system. These probably go for about 50 grand. Uh, I don't even want to get into the pricing and exact model numbers. Obviously this one's I guess, called the Cassandra. Uh, and those are the Keygons. But one thing that really gave, uh, one thing that's legit, very few people will know what this is and I know what a Bikino connector is maybe a couple other people know what a Bikino connector is this for a guy like him to add this after the fact to in acoustic cables is as you can tell he does all these tweaks he's got Shakti stones he's got all these synergistic research stuff all the other tweaks and stuff and what's really impressive about him is that he'll tell you half of this stuff, you know, doesn't even make a difference. He doesn't even use it anymore. But he tries everything. <laughs> so he's got grounding boxes. And now he makes his own grounding box. 
and we did an a b demo of this and again i've never been a big fan of most tweaks and especially um grounding boxes something i wanted to toy with in the future this one he's done it with his own he's got the tri-point the entrec the telos he's got them all he literally tried them all uh this is this one's actually very impressive and you're not going to believe what he uses under the box he showed me <laughs> and he's also taken apart the intrek boxes and shown what's underneath that i don't know if i'm going to call that out and show it to you guys maybe in the membership section but put it to you this way um this is what you this is exactly what you want uh, to use um in comparison just long story short this room is <laughs> amazing. Evidence Master Dynaudio is um, one of my dream speakers. It's actually, the Evidence Temptation was the one I heard, I think, in 2000 that I fell in love with. And, you know, if I could ever have, you know, bought it back then, I think it was $80,000, I would have. Um, so he's got it. It's just one of his other systems. <laughs> and it's amazing sounding. And, again, um, Ari Surratt... These are just killer amps. Uh, we did a, some of the bias changes on this, and it definitely was noticeable. Um, but like I said, he's got the tri-point grounding boxes. Some of these grounding boxes are well into five figures. You know, some of them close to six figures. Telos, active grounding box. So he's tried them all, okay? Uh, he tries different stands. He's got uh, esoteric... I'm sure it's an X something model. Uh, I'll have to get all the model numbers for you guys, but just giving you an overview right now of stuff that I recognize. Um, yeah, transparent cabling. You rarely see this VAC 300B, eight 300Bs in there. This was uh, quite a rare piece that you don't see often. Uh, there's a Bricosti, I recognize that. I don't know what else we've got over here. He tries everything, guys. Uh, and you rarely see the center channel matching for the evidence temptations. That's just sick. Uh, unbelievable. Put a little BMW center channel there. Again, tried all of these things. And he's not afraid to tell you he tries it and it doesn't work. He doesn't use it. You know, so... You know, half of these things he says, you know. And he opens up the box, like I said, on the grounding boxes. And if it doesn't have much in it, doesn't do anything, he'll try to perfect it. And so, very impressive. I get lost even still in the, trying to find my way around. Oh, just amazing. So, um, he gets toys in all the time. And he's got some new cabling he's putting in. As you can see, some in acoustics. Just an amazing house. I've never seen an island this big in my life. I mean, <laughs> it's just incredible. And what's also cool is you'll just see sp spattered about audiophile stuff here, there, everywhere. <laughs> you know, it's a true audiophile home everywhere you turn. Uh, he's a foodie. He's got awesome kitchen. Did some cooking this morning. Killer stuff. These are the um, title or T-Doll, however you pronounce it. Um, these aren't the Akira's. These are the Sand, uh, Sun, Sun, Sunray, I think. Yeah. I'm going to have to get all this for you. I'm just going based on memory of what I've seen. Um, another gentleman is over right now uh, taking a listen. One of my subscribers actually decided to come on out, and uh, he's listening to the Aries Surratt. I'll give him a chance to do that. Okay, ASR gear. This is extremely rare. Not something you see that often. Um, sorry, it's a little dark. Um... I'll try to get some better pictures later. Just trying to give you free-flowing ASR gear. Killer. Um, I think they'd use a lot of battery 
um, powering as well. Rarely see that. Rarely see these. Um, okay, rail 25. G1. This stack is amazing. And guess what it's mated to? You guys recognize it from the behind? The Harry Surratt Wayback. Killer. I'm going to go chill in the back one. So, oh, there is a home theater with JM Labs, uh, Grand Utopias. I'm sure many of you in the hobby long enough to know that Focal used to be JM Labs and what that used to look like and sound like. Um, I'll show you that at some point. This SUV, this Lincoln is bad. The most comfortable seats I've ever been in in my life. There's a Bentley back there. This room is a little bit dark, but this is his dedicated listening room. You can see the treatments. The walls are actually this thick with uh, insulation, he said. And yeah, you could probably even tell my voice as I'm talking in here how much more natural it sounds. And lighting is a little bit limited. I think we got the max lighting, so I apologize. Um, wait, I can probably do it. Okay. Zoom in a little bit more. I can put on the flash. He's got the... Um, Six pack carbon fiber carbon specials. Only place you'll see Estelon Extremes probably in the North America until 3MA opens their dealership in uh, Las Vegas. Ari Surratt, their mega top of the line gear. Just amazing sounding. Um, and the ability to change the bias. I don't even want to get into too much of the technical talk. Um, I'm going to be scheduled to do at some point in the near future uh, a call with the uh, owner and designer to get more detail. So I don't want to misspeak, but um, the ability to control the bias mainly on the input and then this triode FET, I believe it's called. He's got books of the, uh, let me show you real quick. You get a manual that is second to none hardcover book when you buy these and yeah it is just much like I featured when I've done the um, the Wilson audio it's got adjustable gain adjustable bias some of the things you want to only set with professional help but yeah, the experience of owning Aries Surratt gear, the everything they think of from chassis to sound to customization, and how audible it really is when they do when we, do, when we have done the tweaks so far, changing has been very noticeable that I wouldn't have expected. Uh, certainly on the amps, uh, but we've also done it on the preamps and the DAX. I mean, you look under the hood of these, it's just insane. I don't know if you can even see. <laughs> look at the size of that. <laughs> can you see the terminals at the top? And the, I mean, that looks like a 16 inch high capacitor, <laughs> uh, but I don't even think that, I have no idea. I just wanna learn a lot more about this because Sound wise and design and just everything about it has really taken my impressions of Ari Surratt from just another Me Too company doing fancy chassis, but same old design. It's not the case though with these guys. These are really doing innovative stuff inside the chassis as well as the chassis 
the buying experience and all together. So, and there's an ecosystem advantage to using their components together. Um, although, as you've seen in the other room, you can mix and match. He's mixed matched uh, way back with Ari Surratt. So, and the other thing that gives uh, this gentleman a lot of street cred with me, not only does he do stuff like do the the volcanoes, somebody not knowing even what volcanoes are, much less adding them to his cables is something that you rarely see. But one thing, and when he has done sub rel arrays and he set it up, it's been very seamless when I've listened at the listening position so far. I mean, oftentimes with these rel arrays, they overload the room. They don't, they don't integrate well. They don't disappear. Not in this case. You know, he picks the right spot for them. Um, and the right crossovers and they blend seamlessly and provide a huge benefit in the two rooms where he's using these rel arrays so another credit to rel um, but again he's got every tweak imaginable and like you said you know even these synergistic research things he doesn't even use them anymore he says anymore uh, he's tried everything you know he's not one of these guys that poo poos it based on physics and measurements they can't do anything now in most cases he's found that they really haven't done anything uh, he's honest with himself when it doesn't um, he's got the stein music ones but they're not on um, but let me go show you real quick what he does to build his own grounding boxes and <laughs> you can tell he's got these Speakers called extremes. He does everything to the extreme, as you can tell. Uh, serious audiophile. But let's take a look.